Let him laugh, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only one I say. Let him leave me traps and men to pray to Jehovah. Me, I pray. Let him laugh, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only one I say. Let him leave me traps and men to pray to Jehovah. Me, I pray. Mirai be me instead of playing games For chasing fame, let somebody set the lack of flames no Living my life to the fullest And shout out my halala to the fullest Let my lungs out I'm still rising up to greater highs As long as I'm Hello, bonjour san bonani Welcome, welcome to Rise to Greater Heights Network Where you can turn your fears into greater success While seizing new opportunities it is so significant to have a positive mindset, more especially under these circumstances. So this network has the potential to completely revolutionize every aspect of your life and career. My name is Dr. Riel Kunene, and I'm going to be your host for today. So if you're watching us online, please feel free to put in the chat box where you're watching us from and what you hope to achieve from uh, our podcast. Today, we are surrounded by greatness in the world wide web. We, we have amazing speakers who's going to share some nuggets on uh, spiritual growth. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, in, in uh, Wisconsin, we have uh, Kathy Joe Boyd, AKA CJ C. Boyd. And uh, in Mexico, but originally from Germany, we have uh, Florian Kastner. And in Atlanta, we have uh, Ibrahim Malesi, AKA I am. So at this moment, I will just let our speakers to introduce themselves. So you can go ahead, CJ. All right, I am CJ C. Boyd. I'm a women's empowerment mentor, <clears throat> two-time international best-selling author, founder of Queen by Design. I help women to uncover their limiting beliefs through so that they can be their best version of themselves. I think it's very important for women to use to, to uncover the limiting beliefs and release the labels that we've taken on uh, up imposed sometimes by society and just really use tools to anchor in new beliefs themselves permission to be some better and bigger than what they've been told they can be. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's such a great honor to have you, CJ. You see, I say CJ. <laughs> it's such a great honor to have you. And I am really, really looking forward to hear more of your message. You can go ahead, uh, Florian, and introduce yourself, please. Yes. So I'm Florian. I'm originally from Germany. And this is my first talk, my first speech I ever had. So I'm really, really excited to be here today. And thanks for having me. So my topic today is resilience, which is, this is a great and very important topic uh, for me as well, um, especially on my journey to work with universal law and become a manifestation coach. So I'm very excited to share my thoughts and my experience about how to be today. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's such a great honor to have you, Florian. And um, yeah, I am looking forward to hear more of your message on, around resilience. I, I believe... We've all been resilient in some point in time. So I'm looking forward to hear more of your message. You can go ahead, I am, and introduce yourself, sir. You are muted. Peace and blessings. My name is I am. I'm originally from Philadelphia. I'm a youth facilitator here in Atlanta with a group called Tyro. 
I'm a community activist in my group. I went to prison for seven years for being who I am not, and I had to discover who I was. So part of what I do now is trying to show other men and other women how to find out who they really are. I'm the author of the upcoming book right now called Dad, I Love You, How to Love an Absent Father. I specialize in communication, particularly with self-communication, communication with those around you, and particularly in conflict resolution, so how we can help diminish the violence that goes on in most communities. Wow, wow. It's such a great honor to have you. I am, uh, and uh, really, your story is uh, life-changing, so I'm looking forward to hear more of your, your story. So, Kathy, uh, Kathy, I have uh, a question for you. If you happen to have your own billboard, I can see your billboard coming down there in the busy, busy highway, uh, highway in Wisconsin. What will your billboard say? Not trying to re not trying to become someone else, but remembering who I am. I love it. Don't try to become someone uh, to be someone else, but just be proud of who you are. Just embrace uh, your authentic self. Wow, I love it. I love it. How about you, Florian? I, I don't know where your billboard really is gonna be. Is it gonna be in Germany, in Mexico, in the U.S.? Like where? <laughs> what will your billboard say? <laughs> I would say. Um, so I had, I had a little feature, but I think that's not appropriate. So I, I would say my billboard would be, you know, the thing that you really seek in life is already within you. Wow. Wow. Can you say it again? Yeah. Can you say it one more time? Uh, me, sorry. I would say it. The thing that you really seek in life is already within you. Oh, wow. Wow. I love it. I love it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, everything, like how everything that we put our mindset in, really, we've already, it, it's, it has already been manifested because you, yeah. your mindset is already there. Wow. I love it. I love it. How about you, I am? What will your billboard say? Maybe it's already down there in the busy, busy highway in Atlanta. I don't know. What will your billboard say? <clears throat> Allow me to show you who you are so you can stop being who you were. Allow me to show you who you are. Wow, I love it. I love it. So, I, you know, I think my billboard will be the Ford billboard driving down the highway. And it's going to say what? The sky is no longer the limit. Now the sky is our point of view. So we're all called to rise to greater heights. And it's, it's definitely coming. So we're going to get started with people. We're going to get started with... CJC Boyd. CJC Boyd is um, a women's entrepreneur, women's mentor, empowerment mentor. I don't know where this entrepreneurship coming from. Uh, CJC Boyd is a women's empowerment mentor, international best-selling author, speaker, and the founder of Queen by Design. She uses tools such as uh, EFT tapping, breath work, mindset coaching, and visual, visualization to help women uncover their limiting beliefs and self-sabotage patterns in order for them to release, to, to release them and anchor in new beliefs and self-confidence. So she helps women to give themselves permission to be their best version through gratitude for weather fin who they are now, as well as embody the women they desire to be that can impact the planet in uh, ways that are rooted in, in a tiny drop of self-belief, but turn into a giant wave for change. So kings and queens, please join me and welcome CJC Boyd. I just want to take you all on a little journey. So I want you to remember, you know, back to the day of your birth. You know, think about the miracle that it took for your tiny body to be formed cell by cell, organ by organ. What a miracle that is. So many of us take that for granted, but we don't realize, you know, just how important that process is. And when we are born into this world, we are born perfect, unique, authentic, the person that we are meant to be. And the minute we take that first breath, you know, we're exactly who we're meant to be. We are formed on purpose, with a purpose, so much bigger than ourselves. 
and that day is the day that everyone starts trying to take that away from us our entire lives. So, so think about it. So we go to school, we're on the playground, little Johnny pushes us down, all the other kids laugh at us and our self-confidence is like shot. We go off and we sit on the swings by ourselves because everybody laughed at us. That's a chink in the armor of who you are. Or you're in this classroom and the teacher's asking for, you know, a volunteers to answer the question and you're so excited and you raise your hand. You're like, I know, I know, I know. And then she calls on you and you stammer or you stutter and everybody behind you is giggling and laughing. So you stop raising your hand. You're slowly unbecoming who you are. Or, you know, you're working really hard, you get in the good grades, you make the honor roll, you make the paper and everybody's celebrating that you got good grades and you hear all the kids behind you snickering, teacher's pet. So you stop trying. You're slowly becoming, unbecoming who you are. And so I really just think that we all need to understand that life throws things at us, every situation, every circumstance, every relationship, all those chinks in our armors affect every single thing that comes into our life from that point on. And if we don't try to go back to remembering who we are, we don't try to uncover all those little chinks in our armor, you know, and to use the tools to polish them out and to, you know, make it shine again. We can't be who we're truly meant to be. So going back to the day of birth, we're exactly who we're meant to be when we're born. We're made on purpose exactly who we are. We are given a purpose that nobody else on this planet has except for us. And that purpose is so much bigger than us. And it, I think that it's our job instead of trying to become someone else. I hear so many coaches go, oh, just become this, think, thoughts become things, You know, do this, be like this, be like so-and-so. Don't try to be somebody else. Try to remember who the F you are because that's who you're meant to be. You're not meant to be a cookie cutter version of someone else. You're meant to be exactly who you were put on this earth to be. So it's our job as humans to go back to that all in wonder. It's our job to remember that, you know, how excited we were when we saw a butterfly and we tried to catch it on our finger as a kid. It's our job to go back and have complete joy, you know, joy and wonder and everything. Like, think about it when you have a popsicle on the playground in the summer, and you're so excited and it's dripping down your hands and you're giggling and you're laughing. That's who you are at the core level. You're that giggly little child. You're that tiny human who is just looking at everything in the world with all this awe and you're unlimited. The possibilities are unlimited for you. So it's our job to go back to the inner divine. And I have a program called Awaken the Warrior Within. And the whole goal of that program is to remind you who you are at the core level, at the cellular level, at the level that you were formed to be on this earth for. So I think, you know, we just need to have to remember to go back to looking at everything with open eyes removing all the outside distractions, all the naysayers, all everybody's opinions. Nobody opinion matters except for what you think of yourself. And we often take on labels of other people's opinions, what we should do or who we should be. And the reality of it is, is that we should stand tall in the person that we are. We should shout from the rooftops our authentic selves because we are here on purpose and that purpose cannot be taken lightly. And if you think about the miracle of the divine who created us, created us to be a creator, not to just reverberate what other people are doing, but to create epic stuff. And your voice matters. Your voice is different than mine and your voice is different than mine. And if you're out there and you're trying to be like someone else, you're doing a disservice to your inner divine. So it's our, our duty to reconnect with that inner divine and remember what our true purpose on this earth is. What a profound, what a profound, much needed message, CJC. Wow, you say that uh, we should just give ourselves the, the permission, just give yourself permission to be the person that you've been designed to be. Don't try to live somebody else's life, but just be yourself in a world. I, I, I always say that in a world that is really, really trying to change you, just be yourself, choose to be yourself. Wow, what a profound message. What a profound message to be 
yourself, to be who you are. Don't try to live somebody else's life because guess what? Everyone else out there has been taken. So just be yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, CJC, for such a profound, much, much needed message. So now we are going to Mexico. We are going to Mexico. We have uh, Florian Kastner. Florian Kastner is a Reiki uh, practitioner and a manifestation coach from Germany. He helps people shift their energies and release their fears so they can start creating a life of abundance, love, and success. So before his spiritual awakening, he studied biology and computer science, and uh, he earned uh, his living as a freelance editor as well as a copywriter. His life-changing shifted. His life-changing shift happened two years ago when he transitioned from uh, being a woman to a man, which he describes as a journey to the core of his soul. So kings and queens, please join me and welcome Florian Kastner. Thank you so much. So yeah, that was uh, quite a basic experience for me, um, which brings me right into the topic of resilience and just saying Mexico has a very unstable internet connection. So if you don't understand me, just let me know. So resilience is just for anyone um, to, to understand what is resilience by definition is our capacity to withstand and recover quickly from difficulties of life. So this means, you know, when we when we face defeat, when we face problems and challenges in life, this is our capacity to how do we handle this? How can we manage this? And why is it so important? Because you need resilience in life to master the test of the universe and to grow into your greatest version. And in my last two years, I had a lot of defeats and a lot of challenges to face, uh, which you know made me become the version that I am today. And what I want to teach you, what I want to tell about today is, you know, how can you grow resilience? Resilience is a wide, you know, uh, term, but when it really comes to how to build it, you can say there are five pillars that you need to be aware of. And by strengthening, by improving these pillars, you become more resilient to do. And this helps you on your way to become your better version, you know, to, um, to handle these things in your journey to success. Because you always, we have to know success is not a straight road, it's not a straight line. It's always an up and down. And in order to master these down, and right again, you need to be resilient. So the five pillars that you need to be aware of when it comes to resilience is self-awareness. And this is what we already talked about, you know, just be aware of who you really are in your core, in your, in your true being. Then self-care. So the way of how you take care of yourself, your confidence, your vitality, how you go through life. Your mindfulness, mindfulness, the attention to the present. So how mindful are you when it comes to your circumstances? To your, where are you right now? The positive relationships in your life, very, very important because you know, if you have a surroundings like friends, people who just they make you style thing, they bring you down. So what happens? You are an opportunity. You cannot go to your opinion. And of course, purpose. Just um, purpose is the reason why you are here and the reason what you really want to do everything. And so for the audience, when you listen to this, I want to ask you, or I want to encourage you to ask you who you really are and what you really, really want to do in life. Because in my work with my clients, I it is so much that they do not even know what they really want. So what is the biggest goal? And it's not just a personal goal, like I want to achieve this and that. It's more of uh, a spiritual goal, right? So how can I serve? So what's my, my purpose in life about serving this planet, serving other people? And you will see that this is something that you cannot really determine 
experience, but that you have to discuss it. And so the more you, you go on this journey to yourself to find like this is who I am, this is what I really want, this is you know why I would wake up every single morning at three o'clock if I have to because I just love what I'm doing. Then you tap into this right energy and this frequency of why you are here in this world and attract all the success, all this abundance in your life, and of course still this resilience to become this version that you have to be, right? To, to make a huge impact in this world, to help people with what you know and your experience. And uh, my experience was that when, when I transitioned, um, this, was, this was my you know, part where I found myself, my, my real identity, something more I'd be like, hey, this is, this is me. And this brought me to so many um, further steps of what I really like to do, um, coaching people, understand, make them understand how the universe, uh, universal laws are working, how they can, you know, build this confidence, build this resilience to say, like, this is my goal, and I will go for this goal until I achieve it. No matter what, there's no plan B. This is what I'm here for, and I will go for it. And this is, you know, that's the beauty. So for my audience, think about these questions. Who are you and why are you really, really here? What do you want in life? Create this huge goal. Say like, I want to be a speaker on a stage and talking to thousands of people. You don't have to know how to get there. But when you feel it and when you're already there, you can see yourself better. This is how you create the goal. And on this way, you will build the system. You become more self-aware. You will take more care of yourself because you know why you're doing this, right? And yes, this is like the ultimate um, step, step to be more resilient and achieve things in life that you really want. Oh my goodness, Flurry, and you've just mentioned that we should follow our purpose we've been called here to serve a purpose you've mentioned that yes I, I believe that everyone through the resilience there is greatness that comes from the resilience and the way you empower let me see I was just taking notes when you're talking the way you you empower individuals to shift through uh, their energies uh, and releasing the, their fears so that they can create that kind of life the life of abundance that we all need the life of love that we all need and success what a profound message that you've shared with us today, really around resilience. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Florian, for sharing such a profound, much needed message. Thank you. So now we are going to I am. So Ibrahim I am Malesi was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was raised by a single mother who relocated uh, the family to Atlanta to prevent Ayam from growing up in a crime ridden city. So while in Atlanta, they experienced homelessness and poverty. Ayam ended up going to prison in 2015 in Arkansas while he was attending college and he served seven years. So why incarcerated uh, Ayam embraced Islam and learned about knowledge of self and is dedicated to helping black men learn about self not to end up in that situation. So Ayam is currently in training to be a youth facilitator in Atlanta. And he's also publishing a book entitled, Dad, I Love You how to love an absent father. So kings and queens, please join me and welcome I am. Peace and blessings. I wanna start off by using a word that nobody is a real fan of because the way we've been raised to think, we see this word as a negative when it's really a positive when used in the right context. And the word is sacrifice. The word sacrifice stems from the word sacred which means to dedicate to a higher cause. When you are sacrificing something, it is more than you just giving up something, which is one of the reasons most of us don't like this word because we don't like to give things up. 
but you are dedicated to a higher cause to receive something else in exchange. Because that's what sacrifice is. You're dedicated it to something higher because you're getting something in exchange for it. One of the things I had to do to start getting on this journey of growth and spirituality, I had to sacrifice old emotions I was feeling. I harbored a lot of resentments towards my parents, particularly my father more than anybody else, because I felt he didn't live up to the expectation I needed him to. So I had to sacrifice those feelings towards him. I had to dedicate them to get an exchange of different emotions. And it took me on a journey where I learned how to tell my father, man, I love you. Despite what you may have done or what I feel you didn't do, you gave me something I could not give you back. And that's life. How you can tell if you're reaching a level of spiritual growth. Try to do something that you know was not favorable. And tell me how it makes you feel when you try to do it. If you're a person that struggled with alcohol addiction, you haven't done it in a while because you went on a journey yourself. Try picking it up and tell me how do you feel before you do it. For some people, it'll be a tightness, stump, tightness in their stomach. For other people, it may be a burning sensation in your heart. But it'll be something inside of you that you can't put a rational feeling of, but it's communicating to your mind that you don't need to be indulged in this. When I went and committed my robbery, right before I'd done it, I hadn't committed a robbery in a long period of time. Before the actual action was taking place, there was this tightening in my stomach and this burning in my heart. And it wasn't making rational sense to me because I committed many robberies, never got caught before. On top of this, I'm in a state, nobody knows me. So this seems like the perfect getaway. But that feeling kept communicating, do not do this. This is not going to have a favorable outcome. I still committed the action and it caused me in a situation where I lost Actually, I won't even say loss. I exchanged seven years of my life. But that's how you can start telling when you've reached that level of spiritual growth. And on top of that, it's on a positive note. Go about a situation and see if you feel differently about it. You may have had resentment towards somebody. You may have had disdain towards somebody. But when you embrace them now, when you see them, when you think about your thoughts, it's a different level of feeling at that point. You feel a level of compassion towards them. You feel a level of empathy for them. You've grown in that level because you start to acknowledge that the way the universe is set up, everybody was made different. Everybody was given their own different circumstances. So when you've embraced somebody that you once was not in favor of and then you see them again, you have a different feeling towards them. That's because you understand they've had to partake a particular journey that you've had to partake yourself. And each one of you arrived at different past in life that brought you to different conclusions in your life. Now, some of us, and I went through this for about a year, reached this level in our life where we don't feel like we're growing spiritually no more. It happens to everybody. I don't care who you think you are. Everybody gets to that level in their life where you no longer feel you're growing. I was at that stage for almost a year where every day I feel like I'm feeding myself but at the same time, I feel like I'm starving myself at the same time. And I couldn't overcome that feeling. And you have to remember, you are a seed. When you first did your journey through the fallopian tube of your mother, and you entered her and you, you connected with the egg, you started off as a seed. You had to get planted in a garden to grow. You never stopped being that seed. What you have to do when you reach that level where you feel like you're not growing no more, you have to plant that seed in a whole nother garden. Sometimes we plant it in a garden we can't grow no more in. Sometimes you got weeds in your garden that stop you from growing. You got to remove those weeds. And then sometimes, and this is where I was actually at my journey. Someone had to reveal to it. I kept watering myself before I digested the first, the first amount of water that was put on me. Because some of us yearn for that spiritual growth for so long, We'll put ourselves in a situation where we're overwatering ourselves before we've even grown and soaked in the water that's already been poured upon us. That's one of the things I had to learn where, and I'm not going to go brief with it, but I met a man. And he became one of the most pivotal figures in my life. And every day he watched me, he says, brother, I see you read every day. And you're making a big mistake with your reading. I'm reading books like Think and Grow Rich. How to Conquer the Mind, 
I'm reading books. I'm not seeing other guys in my circumstance reading. So I thought, this man crazy. What is he talking about? So I asked him, what is he talking about? And he said, you can read all the books in the world. They're not going to give you what you're looking for. You're not going to get that spiritual you're looking for until you learn how to read life. Because when you learn how to read life, the sun is going to shine on you. And that water that's been poured on you is going to begin to dry into you. And once it's begin to dry into you, that's when you can pour some more water on you so you can grow again. I'm I am. That's all I had to say. Yes. Come on now, I am. Come on now. It really, you've mentioned that we are the seed. We are the seed. And a seed cannot grow without you just nurturing, watering that seed until it grows. And you've also mentioned that we are all different in this world. So you love to kind of release, uh, release your emotions that you, you once held against somebody. Your story really, it's, uh, it's really life-changing the way you, you just chose uh, like to, to love your, your absent father. And I, I'm looking forward to lay my hands in that book that you are writing. I'm really, really looking forward. Thank you so much, uh, I am for such a profound, much needed message around gain and sacrifice for continuous spiritual growth. Thank you, thank you so much, my brother. Wow, what a day. You see, like um, I'm just looking at the lineup of our speakers that we have here. We are all from uh, different, uh, uh, different parts of war, but we, you, you know, we only have one race, which is the human race that we are running after. And uh, the way these stories, they connect together, it's really, really uh, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, amazing speakers. And to our audience online, uh, really, you've heard it all from all these amazing speakers. So if you happen to have any questions to any of the speakers today, please feel free to drop your questions in the chat box. And then we will attend to your questions uh, at the end of the podcast. Uh, if you happen to have any questions for CJC, drop it on the ch chat box. If you happen to have any questions uh, for Florian, drop it in the chat box. Uh, for I am, please drop it in the chat box. We will attend to your questions at the end of the podcast. So what I will do next, I am going to be the next and final speaker. Let me see if I can get my bio here. And then I will share with you, then I will come back and speak. So please enjoy. I want you, as you think about your dreams and goals, to put this down. Rise to greater heights. Rise to greater heights. Because you need to be clear about, about your career goals in order for you to gain guidance on professional development. Really, my goal as a mentor or, or, or as a coach, it's so simple. My goal is to study your current situation, identify limiting beliefs and other potential obstacles that you might be facing, and then design a plan of inspired action to empower you to pursue uh, success and drive sustainable. I think whosoever said that the sky is the limit was wrong. From today on, I, Dr. Riel and Kunene, believe that the sky is our point of view. Mom. So I think whosoever said that the sky is the, the limit was wrong. From today on, I, Dr. Riel and Kunene, believe that the sky is our point of view. So let's all rise to greater heights. of you so let's all rise to greater heights rise to greater heights Dr. Nam Pumalelo Rial Kunene is an international human rights policy analyst who consults on policies and procedures related to human rights compliance. She is a highly sought after energetic certified Lace Brown international speaker. This passionate leader holds a PhD with a discipline in leadership and business. Dr. Rial N. Kunene is the author and host to Rise to Greater Heights, a book and YouTube channel to turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. She is also a coach, mentor, and an MC. 
well known for encouraging many to rise from mediocrity into greatness. Her vision is not only to motivate, but also to empower audiences with a fresh perspective inspiration they require to pursue success and drive sustainable outcomes. In a seriously funny way, Dr. Kunene is an award-winning author. Ten times number one Amazon and international best-selling author, her number one best-selling book, Rise to Greater Heights, has inspired and empowered many to pursue their personal and professional passion to become go-getters. As a trainer, diplomacy protocol officer, and strategist, Rial believes that we are in full control of our choices. Her mission is to meet the needs and transform lives of her clients and her audience. She is also a true advocate for creating new policies that uphold human rights and prevent human rights violations. Dr. Kunene's purpose is to teach everyone about human rights and help organizations understand and promote human rights. Her goal is to study your current situation, identify limiting beliefs, then design a plan of inspired action to empower you to achieve specific outcomes in your life. This change maker, trailblazer, and revolutionary is pushing boundaries and creating a real change worldwide. Like a phoenix that never accepted defeat and rose from its own ashes, she wants to challenge you to unleash your greatness and rise to greater heights. Dr. Rial N. Kunene wears many hats. As a professional certified sales manager, CEO, certified travel counselor, publisher, medical aesthetician, philanthropist, and a commissioner for oaths, following her dreams gave her purpose to see her goals through and understand that she does have everything she needs to reach her full potential. Her everyday message is that your journey to be a better person starts with you. So knowing who you are to your core will make you understand that you are the only one who can accomplish your dreams. Hebrews 11, Psalms 27 and 40 keeps her to rise to greater heights. The sky is no longer the limit, but now the sky is our point of view. So let's all rise to greater heights. Kings and queens, please join me. Welcome, Dr. Rial N. Kunene. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you so, so much. Amazing. Because, you know, I'm, I'm like uh, following such a powerhouse. I'm following the footsteps of such a powerhouse. So I'm like, uh, really, what else is left around spiritual growth that I can share? But before I continue, I just want to double check. I just want to double check if I'm in the right platform here. How many of you with a raise of hand can say that, Riel, I have never, ever complained in life. Never, ever complained in life. Seemingly, I'm in the right platform because, you know, sometimes in life we go complaining, complaining about everything. Oh, the weather is really bad today. Traffic was worse than expected. My family drives me crazy sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, the movie was really disappointing. You name it. Though whining can be a way to build an inspiration, it can also keep us from acting and it gives excuses time to procrastinate from achieving goals. One thing I've realized is that we usually complain in the wake of a negative situation. And we tend to focus more on the problem than finding potential solutions. It's always much easier to complain than to find a solution. And individuals who whine on a regular basis, they are, they are, they are up to have a bad health. So next time we'll find you complaining that, hmm, why do pizzas come in square boxes yet they're round? And funny enough, they are cut in triangles. Does that sound like you? Yeah, please, please write this down, write this down. Spiritual growth, spiritual growth. I know, Kathy, she mentioned that you should give yourself permission. Permission just to be your best version, true gratitude from where you've been in life. And Florian on the other side, he was like, uh, we need to shift our energies and we'll have to release all the fears, all the fears that we have so that we can start creating a life of abundance. And then uh, I am on the other side, she was like, he shared every, all, all the nuggets on how to gain and sacrifice for continuous spiritual growth. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna approach spiritual growth uh, using the Christian approach uh, for spiritual growth because uh, seemingly we are all from all different walks of life. So I'm gonna share the Christian approach on spiritual growth. Like, um, I know, like, uh, you know, if you want to grow something, if you've ever tried, like, to maybe keep it a plant or even uh, a garden alive, you've probably noticed that the time and energy 
it takes to help the plants grow is, uh, uh, is crazy, really. However, as the plant uh, uh, thrives and blooms, all the hard work uh, you've put into nurturing, really it pays off. So as, as a seed grows, as a seed grows, when it's planted, when it's watered, followers of Christ, uh, it's the same, same pattern uh, to grow in this, uh, into spiritual maturity when you've been planted, when you've been watered and you are in a good soil. So my everyday book, uh, it describes a fictional scene of a farmer planting seeds. So some seeds uh, fall on the path, some, or, or some seeds on the rocky places, and some on thorns, and some on a good soil. But the only seeds that fall on good soil grow into healthy plants. So the meaning of this parable really, it, it means that the one who hears the word, the one who hears, who hears the word of God and understand it is the one who grows in their faith. So spiritual growth, it also goes with faith. So to grow in uh, spiritual maturity, that is to grow spiritually, it is uh, um, it has to look more like uh, you are growing to be the best version of yourself. Like, like CJC mentioned that you love to be the best version of yourself. The best version of yourself that God designed you to be. Don't try to live somebody else's life. Good people, you really don't have to see the whole staircase in life to get to the top, but you need to take the first step to get to the top. As my mentor always say that you don't have to be great to get started but you have to get started to become great in life. So what do I really mean to, uh, by saying grow spiritually? So I just wanna invite you on this journey with me as I explore the answers to this question, because no matter how long we've been on our spiritual journey, we can know one thing that is so true. We will never just naturally keep growing deeper with our spiritual roots, but our very nature and pro propensity towards selfishness and sin will always, always strive to take us the other direction. So it has to take a clear focus and commitment to our God who works miracles within us to grow in a way that reflects his character more and more. So good people, it's a wake up call. It's a wake up call. All these amazing speakers have shared that different approaches on spiritual growth, really. So it's a wake up call, but when the alarm clock goes off, please, please, please don't ever hit this news button. Don't be like, I will wake up in the next two minutes. I will wake up in the next four minutes. You know what? Forever is a long time. Why don't you wake up, get going and grow spiritually? Because some of the most spiritually mature individuals that are, are, I know some are out there, they've shared some powerful things in common. First thing uh, is that they've learned the value of prayer. They've learned the importance of prayer goes with meditation. They've learned the importance of uh, time with God's word, like reading your Bible, re reading, just soaking in the spirit. And most of all, they've all faced some very dark times in their journeys. And their faith has been strengthened through fellowship. They fellowship with one another. They fellowship through giving. They fellowship through sharing uh, and serving one another. They understand that the need that that they need God's power through His Holy Spirit to walk wisely in His life in their lives. Really, so I am very very uh, freshly challenged to follow the same path. As flight attendants always say that put on put on your oxygen mask first before you assist others because if you don't, you and the other person you are trying to help could possibly go down. So it's high time put on that oxygen mask first to yourself before you go out there and help your neighbor because when that flight goes down, trust me, you will definitely go down without that oxygen mask. So the reality is your journey to be a better person it starts with you. So knowing who you are to your core, it will make you understand that you have everything around you to reach to your full potential. So don't ever, ever give up on your heart's desires. Just recall this, just in case you can't find a way right now. You can have the drive within you to become what you really want to be in life. You know, I am a firm believer of affirmations. So we're going to affirm this. We're going to affirm this, that you can have the drive within you to become what you really want to be in life. So as uh, we affirm it, I just, I, I just want you to place your, 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 your left hand on your chest and you're gonna raise uh, your right hand. So place your left hand on your chest and raise your right hand. And we're gonna affirm this. You're gonna say, I can have the drive within me 
to become what I really want in life. Can we say it one more time as if you have faith in your own powerful voice? And guess what? It will echo throughout the whole universe. Say, I can have the drive within me to become what I really want in life. Yes, you can have that drive within you. Just give yourself a random applause because you can have the drive within you to get where you want to be in the next three, three months, to get where you want to be in the next six months. It's inside of you. It's not outside of you. You can have it. You know, it's so funny how my mom and dad gave me this beautiful, beautiful name, Nompumelelo. I know many when they try to say my name, Nompumelelo, they always butcher my name. But my name really, like I believe many of our names here, they have a meaning. So my name in my own language, it means mother of all success. So you can see that I am really, really challenged to chase after success. No matter what comes my way, I'll have to chase after success. So if I may ask you, how many of you have dreams and goals that you want to achieve? Maybe let me say in the next six months, I know myself, I am one of those people. I want you as you think about your dreams and goals to put this down, rise to greater heights, rise to greater heights because you need to be clear about your career goals in order for you to gain guidance on a professional development. So as a coach or as a mentor, like many of us here, my goal is so simple. My goal is to study your current situation, identify limiting beliefs and other potential obstacles that you might be facing, and then design a plan of inspired action to empower you to achieve specific outcomes in your life. I so wish that you can just tell yourself that, you know what, I've had enough. All these amazing speakers have shared more nuggets around our spiritual growth. <clears throat> They've shared, uh, as the CJC have shared that you'll have to believe in yourself, believe in yourself. And then uh, for Orion on the other side, he was like, um, from your resilience, try to grow to greatness. From that resilience, try to overcome all those fears, all those challenges and serve your purpose. And then I am on the other side. It was like, uh, to gain something, you love to sacrifice something. You love to release something from yourself. So I so wish that you can tell yourself that, you know what, I'll have to make a difference. I'll have to make a difference within myself. I'll have to make a difference to those who look at me as an inspiration. I'll have to make a difference in my community. But in order for you to go out there and be the change that you want to see and make that difference, You've got to be hungry. You've got to be hungry like a hungry lion in the jungle. Really, that hungry lion in the jungle, it doesn't matter what kind of animal comes this way. It doesn't matter if you're that giant elephant or that small squirrel by the jungle. All that hungry lion sees in front of his face is lunch. It's so funny because even with elephants, when they see a lion, what they do is that they run. It's all about the mindset. Once you believe, you become. They already told themselves that, you know what? I am a lunch to that lion. So each and every time when I see a lion, I have to run. I believe that's the lion mindset that we need in order for us to grow up spiritually. Because I believe that we all rise together and we rise by lifting each other up. We don't rise by tearing anyone down or stepping on, on another person. We rise by lifting each other up. You know, it's so funny when I was in the eighth grade, when I was in the eighth grade, I was nicknamed Phoenix. I was nicknamed Phoenix after writing a composition using the idiomatic expression that says, uh, I rose from the ashes like a, phoenix, uh, like a phoenix bird, meaning I became successful again. Really that English teacher, she didn't know that the nickname Phoenix, it resonates with me and it also aligns with my destiny. So for those of you who don't know the phoenix bird, the phoenix is a Greek mythological bird believed to rise from its own ashes after being buried like hundreds of years ago. This immortal creature acquires new life by rising from the ashes of its own ancestor, which represents our capacity for vision and success. I want to encourage you, if you are watching and listening under my voice today, that when your world comes crashing down, wear your scars to show how a phoenix feels like to die from inside and trust in your own capability to rise from your own ashes because uh, the, the phoenix has to, has to die, bear and experience pain before resurrection from its own ashes. Please write this down, write this down. Resilience to greatness. Resil <laughs> Resilience to greatness. I know you've had this before that your setback is your setup for your comeback. Your setback is your set setup for your comeback. So if I can be honest with you, 
I don't know what goals you've set for the next six months. I don't know what dreams you have for your own future. But here is one thing I know about you. You are destined for greatness. Inside of you, God has put seeds of excellence. Those seeds are supposed to grow and flourish. But many people have become crippled by their past encounters. And some have stepped over other people to get to the top. But I believe that we're all destined for greatness. With God, I believe that we're all destined for greatness as long as we follow his strategy. This is when the growth commences because discovering your gift and following God's idea, it will make you understand that you have everything around you to reach to your full potential. My everyday inspiration, Mr. Les Brown, who once said, if you had to die today, at this very moment, at this hour, what dreams, what ideas, what visions, what goals, what skills, what talents, and what books will die with you? And the late Dr. Miles Mundro continues saying that the richest place on this planet is the cemetery, because that's where all the goals, all the visions, all the skills, all the talents, and all the uh, goals have been buried. Honestly, I don't know about you, but with me, really listening to all these amazing messages, it, got, it gave me sleepless nights. That was when I decided uh, to, uh, to first channel my first book, Now I Have 10, uh, I, because I believe that I have everything around me to reach my full potential. So it's the same thing. This year, I'm so determined. I'm, I'm really so determined to rise to greater heights with as many, as many motivated individuals as I can. I just want to rise to greater heights uh, with these individuals who are ready, who are really ready to start and scale and grow their businesses within 90 days. Yes, I've said 90 days. So I offer a free, no obligation, 30 minute friendly Zoom call for you to kind of uh, share with me your fears so we can overcome them together. Uh, so if you're interested in becoming uh, a, a public speaker, for example, an author, a coach, and an entrepreneur who wants to multiply your income by doing what you love so deeply that no one can take you away from what you are doing and making a real impact out there by doing what you love. So go out there on my website, www.risetogreaterheights.com because I just wanna empower you to become highly effective and an inspiring leader with a kind of personalized, measurable, but a scalable program. And yes, it comes with a guarantee. I know many out there, they always promise you this and that and that, but they never fulfill their promises. So I will definitely show you the smart way to start and scale your business. You can start your business as a side hustle, which will become your main gig. And uh, I will also give you the key to unlock freedom in order for you to live a balanced life. Maybe uh, you are just that individual who is out there who wants to write and publish your book within 90 days. Trust me, I can definitely, definitely make that happen for you. So just book that free consultation call with me uh, at www.risetogreaterheights.com. So many might ask, why are you doing this? Why are you really doing this? It's because, you know, I've been there, I've done that, and I know how it feels like. Because five years ago, really, I was kind of lost in the hustle. I was exhausted. I was overwhelmed. I remember myself. I had a ton of ideas, but there was no tried and true strategy that would run with my ideas. So it was only when I decided to invest in coaching. And then that was when I created my first premium offer. And I, sta I started seeing things changing in my business. I built an income generating business just doing what I love and making a real impact out there. So now it's your turn. It's your turn, good people, to build your wealth. The power is just inside of you. So go out there and um, uh, book that call with me. If your current business uh, isn't generating enough sales, perhaps you want to start your business, but you are lacking direction. It means that it's high time to book that call and you give yourself a second chance because I am a results-driven coach. I am a results-driven coach. So I'm gonna teach you all the strategies and techniques on how you can actually overcome your weaknesses. Because, you know, growing up, I didn't have much in life because my father decided to have an early departure from this planet Earth. And I thank God that I missed that flight because I'm still here. I'm still sharing my message with the world because I had everything because of my mama's love. And I love you, love you so much, mom. So I think whosoever said that the sky is the limit was wrong. From today on, I, Dr. Riel and Punene believe that the sky is our point of view. So let's all rise to greater heights. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, amazing speakers. So at this moment, please feel free to share with our audience how they can work with you, how they can reach out to you. If you have any freebie that you wanna offer them, please feel free to share with our audience. I'll go and check if you have any questions being posted as well as uh, feel free to share your final thoughts on spiritual growth. So CJC, the stage is yours, Queen. All right. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, anything at CJC Boyd. Um, I think the last thing that I would say as far as spiritual growth, and it's, it's all about your inner divine. I mean, we are all created from the great creator, but he created us to really embrace what he gave us because we're all in his image, we're all in his likeness and everything that he is, we are. And I just think it's so important for people to go back to that. Um, and out of that knowledge, I've created a show called Awaken the Warrior on Phoenix TV, airs on Apple TV, Roku, Fire Stick, and it's going to be in 100 countries in, by June. And I share stories of people who have, you know, forgotten who they are and have had something happen that tweaks them. Like you said, they're Phoenix rising from the ashes within, and they chose to rise again and awaken that warrior within. And I have helped have them share their stories of awakening in order to provide people with the inspiration and the hope to know that they can do it too. So. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, CJC. I believe that our audience will definitely reach out to you and uh, start working with you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, you, can, uh, you can go ahead, Florian, and share with the audience, please. Yes, so you can find me at on uh, Facebook with my name, Florian Katna. And I, what I offer right now are two, three sessions for everyone to, where we find out what you, what your limiting beliefs are right now. Because I think it's so, so important to just see like where I, where I am right now and what holds me back from my goal. So we will dive into, you know, your subconscious mind and see the root cause of what's holding you back in terms of, you know, your financial growth, in terms of just your, your personal growth and your goals. And in my other session, we will, you know, reprogram the subconscious mind and bring all this abundance and success into you, right? So that you have a complete different mindset, a complete different way of thinking um, to really go for your goals and take the first step that's needed. So if you'd like to try this and working with me on your subconscious mind, feel free to reach out. And yes, I love to do the actual work with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Florian. And I believe that our audience will definitely reach out to you and uh, uh, see what you have in store for them. As an accountability partner, you're going to hold their hand. I believe that. Thank you so much, uh, Florian. You can go ahead uh, I, um, and share with the audience, please. Peace and blessings. If you'd like to reach me, my Facebook name is Ibrahim A. Malesi. You just look at the billboard she posted if you need to know how to spell the name out. My Instagram is N-U-K-P-U underscore I am. And my email, which will be the best place to reach me directly, is N-U-K-P-U I am at gmail.com. As I said, I'm releasing a book June 18th, Father's Day in the United States called Dad, I Love You, How to Love an Absent Father. It's four steps in particular I took to get to that level. The first one was acknowledgement, acceptance, forgiveness, and then the last one is love. If you'd like to reach out to me, because this is a method I didn't just use for my father. This is a method you can use with anybody in particular in your life. You can reach out to me directly, and I will show you how to get there. I would like to share this with you, though, on the spiritual growth of it. The Most High created two energies in the world, the masculine and the feminine. The Most High split its nature up in them two energies. The first one is in your mother, the feminine. The second one is in your father, the masculine. Your direct connection with the Most High from the very start is through your parents. So when you care a level of disdain towards one of your parents in particular, it's hard for you to really get that connection to the most high because your first connection with it has already been severed. I didn't realize how much my connection with the most high was really being restricted 
because that grudge I could not let go of my father for not being there was so powerful. It was preventing me from really having that connection. So I recommend for anybody, again, the book is called Dad, I Love You, How to Love an Absent Father. When it comes, when it comes out, get that book. It'll help you so much through that spiritual journey, that connection. Because there's a quote in particular, and I'm just going to give it to y'all now. We don't choose our parents. God does. Hey, y'all take care. Have a great one. Wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I believe I believe our audience will reach out to you. I am. Um, your, your story is uh, very profound. And what a perfect timing to release uh, your book on Father's Day. What a perfect timing. Wow. Uh, thank you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I am. Thank you so, so much. Amazing speakers, Lorraine and uh, CJC, really, for being with us here at Rise to Greater Heights Network. We really don't take your presence here with us for granted. I know you had to spend 90 minutes just to be with us here. So it's a great, great honor. It's a privilege to have you. And uh, to our amazing audience, really, I, I believe our amazing audience have been inspired. I can see uh, Alisa Brooklyn watching and uh, Princess Sabe, she's saying that um, we, are, we are running one race and Pell Gomboa is also watching, Bella is also watching. Mariah is saying that be your authentic self. Yes, Mariah, just be your authentic self. Benoit is also watching, Anna is also watching. So I believe our audience really have been inspired. They've been motivated with all of your, your messages, amazing speakers. So thanks to you for sharing your knowledge, your wisdom around spiritual growth. So to our audience online, thank you. Thank you so, so much for joining us here at Rise to Greater Heights Network, where you can turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. I hope from all these amazing messages, from all these amazing speakers, you've been inspired, you've been motivated, and you are ready to rise to greater heights. So do join us next week at the same time, same place, Thank you, Maxi Sia Bonga. Let him laugh, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only one I say. Let him lay me traps and men to pray to Jehovah me, I pray. Let him laugh, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only let him lay me traps and men to pray to Jehovah me, I pray. May I be me instead of playing games? For she's in fame, let somebody set the lack of flames. No, living my life to the fullest. And shout out my halala to the fullest. Let my lungs out. I'm still rising up to greater highs. As long as I'm